Today I'm revisiting the topic of rosé wine. So I actually already made a video about rosé. It was the rosé paint and sip, but I feel like I didn't really talk about rosé. I was too busy painting in the video to talk about the, the wine. So I'm gonna revisit the topic. And today, as you can probably already see, I have two drastically different wines, but yet they're both from Mount Etna here in Sicily. So what is making these so different? We're gonna find out in today's video. So there's actually a few ways that you can make rosé wine. You could blend red wine and white wine to make rosé, but probably the more common method is the, the skin contact method. And that's what we have going on here with this guy, the Fattorie Romeo del Castello. They took the typical red wine grapes from Mount Etna, which is the Norello Mascalese and the Norello Cappuccio. And they leave the skins on in contact with the juice for a short amount of time. So we're talking only a few hours and then they're gonna remove the skins because the color, the red color that you would find in like a red wine, that's coming from the skins. So when they remove the skins after a short period of time, then you get this lighter color. Now this one from the Villa Grande, this one's a little bit different. So this also has the Norello Mascalese from Mount Etna, the same one that's in here as well. It's the, the darker, the dark grape used to typically make the red wine. That is in here doing the same thing, skin contact for a short period of time and then taking it out. But this one, they have put the white wine in here as well. The, the Caricante from Mount Etna is in here as well. And we can see they're very different. This one is a whole lot lighter. And if you were looking at that and you didn't know, you would almost maybe say that that was white wine. I mean, that is extremely light, but there is in fact white wine in there. So two drastically different rosés, both coming from Mount Etna. So I think that's kind of what's so cool about the rosé because you, depending on what the winemaker wants to do, you could have something totally different. Looking at it, of course, it looks like it's gonna be more like a white wine. It is a very light, maybe you would say kind of a copper color, very pale copper color. This one is a medium kind of deep copper color. Some people have described it as onion skin, which I thought was kind of interesting. On the smell, this one smells very fruity, floral. The kind of smells that you would usually kind of associate with the white wine. I mean, it smells a little citrus in there. Maybe some strawberry. And this one smells more like dried fruit. Dried fruit, almost like fruit cake. So a very different smell. Let's go ahead and give it a taste from the Villa Grande. I would say citrus maybe grapefruit type citrus. There is some kind of mineraliness, almost salty, which are typical from the, the Etna white wines that I've done before. You get the citrus, you get the mineral, all that is kind of coming through in this one as well, except maybe for the rosé, I would characterize it more of a grapefruit flavor. Let's go ahead and give the Fattorie Romeo del Castello a go here. But first, the label on here, this guy, race car driver, Consalvo Romeo del Castello. I'll hold it up for the camera here. So maybe you can get a good look at this guy. 
pretty cool. He's got the cigarette hanging out of his mouth. Race car driver. We'll give it a taste. Smells like dried fruit. And it tastes way different than this one. Just like it looks, you would think this one, the Villa Grande, more towards a white. This one, more towards a red, and I think that's true. Tastes the dried fruit, red fruit, maybe some strawberry in there. But then what's kind of cool about this one, there's a certain kind of smokiness, kind of spicy, like baking spices in there. And then also the, the mineral, the kind of gravelly mineralness as well. But those, the spiciness, because this one, I believe, is, is actually aged in some wood barrels as well. So two drastically different styles. And if you're gonna, I don't know, is that even fair to compare the two because they're completely different? Maybe you want the lighter. I mean, you could be slugging this back all day long at the beach, you know, you got a nice hot day, you're at the beach drinking your rosé. This one's gonna go down really easy. It's light, it's fresh, it's, it's very refreshing. This one, totally different. Maybe you, you could have this with food. And to me, you can't even compare them. I, if I had to pick one, but it's personal preference, it's not really saying quality or anything, but if I had to pick one myself, maybe I'd go with this one just because to me it's more complex you know we said dried fruit fruit cake red fruit strawberry also the mineral also the smoky and the spicy I mean that's a lot of different flavors and to me that's more complex than this one which is fantastic don't get me wrong but to me this one is just more interesting so that's it for today's video. I just wanted to revisit the topic of rosé and show you that even though they're both from the same place, you can get two drastically different wines. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'm actually very excited. I have more than 200 subscribers now, and I know that might not sound like a whole lot to some of you, but I'll tell you right now, it was a long, hard climb to 200, so I appreciate everybody that's here and that has decided to stick around. If you liked the video, let me know in the comments, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. But for now, cheers.